Dear friends, welcome to a personalized episode of Enlighten Me. Today, we delve into innovative automotive solutions and significant strides in renewable energy, including the latest from the electric vehicle sector and offshore wind advancements. Join us as we explore these critical developments shaping our future. In a significant advancement for America's offshore wind energy sector, the Eco Edison, the first American-built, owned and crewed offshore wind service operations vessel, SOV, was officially christened at the Port of New Orleans. This marks a major step in bolstering domestic energy production and energy independence. The vessel, constructed by Edison Chauist Offshore, with contributions from over 600 workers across the U.S. Gulf states, will support Orsted's northeast wind farms, including the South Fork Wind, Revolution Wind, and Sunrise Wind projects. The Eco Edison symbolizes Orsted's commitment to establishing a new domestic offshore energy supply chain, featuring components from 34 states, the SOV, a 262-foot-long live aboard, can house 60 offshore wind turbine technicians, ensuring year-round operation. This initiative is part of Orsted's over $20 billion investment in the U.S., highlighting the Gulf Coast's key role in the growing U.S. offshore wind supply chain and showcasing the potential for existing American manufacturers in this emerging sector. At the G7 ministerial meeting in Turin, Italy, energy and climate leaders from major economies reached a consensus on advancing clean energy transitions and set ambitious energy and climate goals following COP28. Key outcomes include a groundbreaking consensus to phase out unabated coal power by the early 2030s and a commitment to increase energy storage in the power sector to 1500 gigawatts by 2030. This represents a significant escalation from the current 230 gigawatts, aligning with the goal to triple renewable energy capacity by 2030. The G7 also recognized nuclear energy as crucial for achieving zero emissions and enhancing energy security, marking a first in G7 communications. Additionally, the G7 condemned Russia's war in Ukraine and pledged to reduce dependency on Russian gas, supporting Ukraine's energy resilience against ongoing Russian attacks. These agreements set a precedent for upcoming international discussions at the G20 and COP29. Sunrun, a leading clean energy provider, has created the largest virtual power plant in the United States, CalReady, by networking over 16,200 customers' solar plus storage systems in California. This initiative, operational during the summer, aims to alleviate the state's electrical grid stress, reducing blackout risks by supplying energy during peak demand periods. In 2023, Sunrun's Peak Power Rewards program delivered up to 32 megawatts from 8,500 customers' batteries to Pacific Gas and Electric Company during evening peaks. This capacity is expected to double, supporting the statewide demand-side grid support program designed by the California Energy Commission. This program, part of California's Strategic Reliability Reserve, seeks to enhance energy supplies during extreme events like heat waves and wildfires, thereby minimizing the risk of rolling blackouts. Sunrun's CalReady will offer grid support daily from 4 to 9 p.m. from May through October, ensuring a minimum of 20% backup reserve for participants' homes. Customers participating in CalReady will be compensated for sharing their stored solar energy, promoting a more resilient and adaptable electrical grid across California. Electricity generation from coal in the U.S. lower 48 states saw a significant decline of about 23% between 2021 and 2023, with the most notable drop of 19% happening from 2022 to 2023. This reduction coincided with a sharp decrease in the average natural gas spot price at the Henry Hub by over 60%. The decrease in coal fire generation is attributed to several factors, including the retirement of approximately 37 gigawatts or 17% of the coal fired fleet since early 2021, an increase in natural gas fired and solar generating capacity, and a shift towards selecting the lowest cost power, 
often wind, solar, and natural gas, over coal. Off-peak coal-fired generation fell around 24% from 2021 to 2023, largely because natural gas-fired units have been replacing coal as an overnight electricity source. Balancing authorities, which ensure the U.S. electric grid's stability, report electricity volume from generators by primary fuel source, though actual fuel consumption is detailed in other EIA surveys and reported monthly with a longer data lag. Now we're about to explore a groundbreaking project. The U.S. Department of Defense, previously influential in boosting the solar power market, is now venturing into green hydrogen with a focus on hydrogen fuel cell microgrid technology. The initiative involves a significant partnership with UK's Intelligent Energy to supply 600 kilowatts of hydrogen PEM fuel cells for a project at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam in Honolulu, Hawaii. These fuel cells, leveraging polymer electrolyte membrane technology, will generate electricity through a chemical reaction, offering a sustainable energy solution as long as hydrogen fuel is available. The project aims to pivot hydrogen supply from fossil fuels to renewable sources, with an existing 1.5 megawatt solar array at the base, earmarked to power green hydrogen electrolysis systems. This move towards green hydrogen microgrids could significantly impact the energy landscape, mirroring the department's previous success with solar energy, potentially shaking up the natural gas market and enhancing military security and operational resilience. Additionally, the project explores mobile applications for fuel cells, targeting heavy-duty vehicles rather than passenger cars, indicating a broader scope for renewable energy in military operations. And now, pivot our discussion towards automotive news. The double-ended Citroen Relay back-to-back -back van, a rebadged Fiat Ducato, also known as the Ram ProMaster in some regions, showcases a clever method for shipping two commercial vans to upfitters. This unique configuration isn't a new invention, but a practical approach by Fiat, leveraging the front wheel layout of the Ducato, allowing the back end to be absent, thus making it possible to bolt another van onto the rear. This process eliminates the need for a temporary dolly or constructing a complete rear subframe and suspension which might not align with an upfitter's customization plans. Upfitters benefit from the efficiency of receiving two vans in one, simplifying transport and handling. In the UK, the Citroen version features a 2.2-litre, 140 horsepower turbodiesel engine with a six-speed manual transmission, boasting equal speed capabilities in both forward and reverse directions. The Biden administration is considering raising import taxes on Chinese EVs from 25% to 100%, effectively doubling their price in the US. This move, excluding Chinese EVs from federal tax credits, aims to protect the domestic EV industry from cheaper foreign competition. While such protectionism is generally unfavorable in a global economy, it's justified when competing against companies benefiting from foreign government subsidies and lower environmental and labor standards. However, this approach is not sustainable. Market forces and international demand for EVs will eventually pressure the U.S. to accommodate imports. Domestic manufacturers are advised to reduce prices through efficient mineral sourcing and avoid imitating Tesla's cost-cutting strategies, which may not appeal to all consumers. Instead, focusing on battery production, leveraging brand loyalty, and enhancing infrastructure could provide competitive advantages over cheaper imports. The article underscores that preparation for these market dynamics is essential, warning against short-sighted decisions that could hinder the transition to EVs. Now we're about to explore GM's latest shift, the Chevrolet Malibu a staple since the 1960s with over 10 million sold, is being discontinued by General Motors by the end of this year, marking the end of its affordable sedans in the U.S. amid declining sedan sales, with a preference shift towards SUVs and pickup trucks, 
the Malibu's production at GM's Kansas City factory will cease to retool for the second-generation Chevy Bolt. This shift reflects a broader industry trend, with automakers like Subaru, Stellantis and Ford also reducing sedan offerings, focusing on more profitable larger vehicles. Despite the Malibu's lackluster appeal, its discontinuation underscores a significant change in American automotive preferences, with potential implications for the future of sedan manufacturing. Meanwhile, the anticipation grows for the second-generation Chevy Bolt, expected to continue the legacy of its predecessor as an affordable electric vehicle option. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Innovation Pulse. If you enjoyed our insights and are eager to learn more, the Enlight Me app is just a tap away. Expand your knowledge with personalized content on over 20 diverse topics, from crypto to health and beyond, all curated to fit your interests. Download the Enlight Me app now at the Apple Store or Google Play, or visit the enlightme.ai website. Stay curious, stay enlightened.